Welcome to the Kurundani Botswana webinar. So I'm actually going to begin with a little bit of an intro to Botswana. Um, for those of you that, that are new to selling Botswana, it's, it's a country that's actually the size of France, yet it only has a population of 2 million. Uh, so it's also got a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's one of the last true wildernesses in the world. And uh, the topography in Botswana is very flat. So for those of you that have visited, you will have seen the vistas, very, very flat, uh, semi-arid Kalahari desert style. And then you have the Okavango Delta, which is the wetter areas of the country. In Northern Botswana, um, it's very, very important in terms of wildlife. It's got one of the largest populations of African wild dog. And as many of you know, they are, they are very endangered. And then Chobe National Park, um, the highest concentration of, of African elephants. So these are some of the reasons why your guests may want to come out to Botswana. It's also very interesting on an archeological aspect. Um, as, as of late, we've seen more and more articles coming out about how it actually might be the birthplace of humankind. It gained independence in 1966, and to this day, it's really marked as one of the most democratic African countries, very little corruption, very safe, um, a, really, a really shining star in the African continent in terms of its politics and policies. So how do you get to Botswana? So access into Botswana is either by air or by road. Um, so by air, your guests would typically be flying into Maun Airport or into Kasani. Into Maun Airport, there's daily flights normally, typically when we don't have Corona to be dealing with, there's normally daily flights from both Cape Town and Johannesburg. If you're going to have guests traveling in by road, they can come in from Victoria Falls or Livingston. And Botswana is ideally uh, positioned to be able to be combined with Cape Town, whether you wanted to do the wine route, garden route, and then also with Namibia, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. Many of our guests will be going and visiting Victoria Falls, um, so often this is included in an itinerary. The flights that arrive into Botswana, into Maun, are really great um, in terms of connectivity into the bush. So these flights are arriving around lunchtime, which means your guests can then hop onto the light aircraft and then into the wilderness regions, whether it's into the Delta itself, Saruti, um, going to the Mahari Khadi or down into the Kalahari. They're all able to fly in the afternoons and get your guests into those camps and lodges, um, often by high tea or at least by nightfall. There's also road transfers that go across from Victoria Falls and Livingston. Uh, these are very easy to get through the border posts. It normally takes a few hours, maybe three or four hours maximum, to get from Kasani Airport across to Livingston or Victoria Falls. And of course, you've got those international connecting flights that are going into those regional airports as well. Carrying on further with access, um, we have Safari Air, which is our sister company. It's a charter company, so they have the small aircraft. They have air vans and Cessna caravans. And this enables us to get our guests from Maun or Kasani into all of the Kurundani properties. Um, this is really great because it means that we have control of this experience of our guests from, from the moment that they're arriving into the country. And we're there to welcome them, doing meet and greet, escort them onto their small aircraft. And for those of you that have been in the little planes in Botswana, it really is part of the experience. It's incredible to see the town turn into these wilderness areas. Within five minutes of being up in the air, you can be game viewing. In terms of seasonality in Botswana, I like to simplify it a bit. You can make it really complicated if you want to, uh, but to keep it simple, we basically have a dry season and a green season, a rainy season. Uh, the rainy season is our summertime, so that's mainly January, February. Um, that's when we're getting our rains. Uh, in terms of water in Botswana, it's, it's an interesting element. Um, so how I like to explain it is our dry season is when all the water is on the ground. So we've got the flood arriving during the, during the dry season. During the green season is when the flood actually retracts back, but yet we have water in the sky. So we have rain coming down. Um, so that's how we define the different seasons. 
And in terms of when your guests want to travel, it really depends on what they want to get out of their experience. So the advantages of the dry season are it's a little bit easier in terms of game viewing because the bush has died back a little bit during the drier months. Um, but yet in green season, you've got amazing migratory birds. Um, for keen photographers, the green season is often the time of year that they're wanting to get into Botswana. So each time of year has, has its um, advantages. Uh, and also budget-wise, you know, our peak season and our green season rates vary significantly, and that's industry-wide. So that was a little intro to the destination. Now moving on to Kurandani, Botswana. So we've been operating for over 50 years within the country, so a very well-established brand. And we're part of Trobi Holdings, which is 100% locally owned and run in Botswana. As I already mentioned, Safari Air is our sister company. Our other sisters that you may have heard of is Trobi Game Lodge uh, and also Desert and Delta Safaris. And we really see ourselves as the custodians of the areas that we operate in. And we're very committed to our environmental policies and also in terms of our um, social commitments. So our commitments to the local communities and social development through our staff, that's really at the core of, of what we do here at Kurandani Botswana. So I have a little video just to get us all into that safari um, mind frame. Um, Please don't worry, if the video doesn't work, it will be on the recording, um, but hopefully, fingers crossed, it's going to work. So enjoy. It's less than a minute long, uh, but it's going to transport us into that Botswana wilderness area. <laughs> So I'd like to introduce our properties to you. We have Shindi and Kanana that are our private concessions. We have Akuti, which is in the world-renowned Moremi Game Reserve. We have Footsteps, which is our little rustic adventure camp. And then we have Danaka, which is the newest property to our portfolio, and that's down in the central Kalahari. You'll see this map throughout my presentation. I'll keep referring back to it just so that you can align yourself with the geography but most of our camps are in the Okavango Delta, and then Danaka is the property that's down in the central Kalahari. So this is just an overview of our properties. Um, we are a five-star brand. We're very, we operate very small, intimate properties. As you can see here, we have a maximum of eight tents in most of our camps. We do have a couple of properties that are even more intimate than that, so Shindi Enclave, and the footsteps camp only have three tents, so we take maximum of six people there. So this is the ultimate in exclusive experience in Botswana. And then here we have Akuti and Danaka and some of their unique selling points, which I will go through in my presentation. And then footsteps camp. So this is the little rustic adventure camp. We do two different safaris from here. So we have young explorers, which is our specialist family safari. And then we have footsteps across the Delta, which is our specialist walking safari. It's quite unorthodox to bring up rates so early in a presentation. However, this is one of our unique selling points. We are a five-star brand offering incredible exclusivity with what I think we can arguably say is quite affordable rates. Botswana is an expensive destination because of its exclusivity, um, but with our packages, we really try to make it more affordable for guests to get out here. What's really lovely about our safari packages is every single package that's booked, a contribution of it goes to our corporate social responsibility project, which is Bana Balatsatsi. Annabelle Tsatsi is a children's centre here in Maun that looks after vulnerable children and offers counselling um, and all sorts of after-school activities for them. We're very much involved in Balabala Tsatsi, so every guest that's booked onto a package is also contributing to that amazing cause. 
Another unique selling point of Curran Downey, and this is across the whole portfolio, is our vehicle policy. So we guarantee a maximum of four people on a game drive on a vehicle. As you can see from this slide here, each uh, window seat has a camera mount. So we're guaranteeing window seats, we're guaranteeing camera mounts, we're guaranteeing a lot of flexibility when you have a maximum of four people on your game drive vehicle. So now onto the properties themselves. Uh, I would like to first off take you to Kanana. So you can access Kanana by air. It has its own private airstrip. So you can fly in either from Maun or Kasani. If you're flying from Maun, it's about a 25 minute flight. So Kanana is a private concession, uh, which means that you have the exclusivity, you have the whole place to yourself. Uh, and it was refurbished at the beginning of last year. So it has a very classic, authentic safari style to it. Very luxurious. So this is the main area. It's built in a, a horseshoe shape around an ancient fig tree in the middle. And when we did the refurbishment, we really tried to focus on making it very comfortable for the guests. And, and how we like to host guests is to really make them feel at home and part of the family. So these are the tents. Um, this camp is completely off the grid. All of our, all of our camps are completely off the grid. Um, this one is 100% solar powered. So you've got your two fans, you've got beautiful views over a, a seasonal floodplain, and then your ensuite bathrooms. Everything you could imagine in a five-star tent, from kukois to beautiful toiletries, um, to your sherry in the evening when you get home after, after your dinner. So I popped this slide in the presentation just to bring up water levels. And um, for those of you that are currently selling Botswana, you'll know that water levels are a hot topic for us. Um, and the flood and are we having a drought? Is it, is it a good flood season? So we have just come out of a drought period for the last few years. But this year in 2020, we've received really good water levels. So it's a very exciting time of year in Botswana at the moment. So this slide that you see here, this is, this is of Kanana. You've got the main area at the left and then the rooms off to the right. Uh, and this is where it was at its driest in about August last year. So the next slide I'm going to show you is of the camp. And we took these photos in the last few weeks. So as you can see at the top corner there, the boats are actually pulling up in front of the main area. So it's totally transformed into a water oasis. And then on the left hand side, you have our heronry, um, which is a an amazing experience to get out there on the boats. So the heronry is one of the unique selling points of Kanana. Of course, we have other fantastic wildlife, uh, got great predator interaction there. But the heronry is something quite different. It's one of the largest in southern Africa. And this is an area where the birds come to breed. Um, this slide here is of a pinkback pelican. So the guest experience is that you head out on the boats and the mackerels, and you can see these birds building their nests, raising their young. It really does convert even a non-birder into a keen twitcher. In terms of activities, we offer both land and water-based activities. So you can head out on the boats and the mackerels. And for those of you that are new to Botswana, mackerels are the dugout, traditionally wooden canoes. It's the traditional form of transport around the delta. And we can also offer fishing from Kanana. Then when you're out on the land, we also do game drives, we do night drives, and you can also do walking safaris. Another unique offering at Kanana is the sleep out deck. So here you can head out after dinner on a night drive with your guide, and you'll come across the sleep out platform all lit up with the lanterns. You spend the night out under the stars, and then in the morning, you head back to camp for breakfast. It really is a mind blowing experience to sleep beneath African skies and also to see the sunrise in the morning and from the sleep out deck we positioned it so you you don't even have to lift your head off the pillow to see the sun breaking the horizon in the mornings. So just to touch on the unique points about Kanana it's a private concession incredible wildlife both on land and aquatic species we have the sleep out deck and if you want to book the sleep out deck you just need to book three or more nights in camp it's a great value add because it's no extra charge. We're also able to do these water-based and land-based activities right the way through the year. Then we have the heronry as mentioned, and this season runs from June right the way through to December. 
We recently refurbished it at the beginning of the year, so everything's looking at the beginning of last year, so everything's looking all beautiful and new. And it's got the highest eco grading possible in Botswana. There's very few properties that have the top level grading, and it's graded eco tourism. So that was Kanana. Then moving on to Shindi. So I'm just going to show you the map again. If you can see Shindi a bit further north, the other side of Chiefs Island. So Shindi again is a, is a five star property um, offering the full range of activities. We're actually rebuilding Shindi at the moment. Um, we started at the beginning of the year redoing the entire camp. We're also rebuilding Shindi Enclave. And Shindi Enclave is a camp within a camp. And Shindi Enclave we offer for small groups of friends or family that want even more exclusivity. So it consists of three tents and we can take a maximum of six people there. So the rebuild has gone really well. I've actually spent the last three months out on site um, and we were almost there. Unfortunately, Corona delayed us a little bit, putting us in lockdown, delayed getting the final uh, materials up into camp. So we're just waiting for our furniture now. It will go in in the next few weeks, but we will definitely be ready before anybody can travel to Botswana. So Shindi is actually one of the oldest properties in the Okavango Delta. It's prime real estate, it's prime wildlife area. Um, it's very, very beautiful. And because we got involved in tourism way back when, over 50 years ago, we were able to secure this site for ourselves. It's got a really healthy population of leopard. That's probably your most common predator sighting. Although we often see wild dog, lion, um, cheetah. I was, I was there last week um, on the build site and we actually had a, a cheetah wandering in front of camp. So it's a very game rich area. Really lovely to be able to op offer the contrast of land and water based activities. Um, so here again, we're able to go out on the channels. This is permanent water that you see here. Um, if we don't have water at our camps, it means there is no Delta. So you can be selling this to guests traveling in 2021, 2022, and we will be able to guarantee these water based activities. So going on to the rebuild itself, um, this is just the mood board. Of, of what we're aiming for. Um, very classic, luxurious, kind of like 1920s explorer style. Um, so all of the tents have been redone, all of the main areas been redone. And the main area is actually built in a treehouse style. So it's built on lots of different levels um, with an amazing view over permanent water. We're going to have two different dining options, so you can dine inside or outside on the star deck. There'll be two different lounges. This is the small studio style lounge, and then we have a larger lounge, all with views over the permanent lagoon. So just a few of the unique selling points of Shindi. It's a private concession, incredible wildlife area. It's really, really game rich. Uh, the main area is built in a treehouse style on lots of different levels. We have an incredible pool overlooking a permanent channel. It's also going to be 100% solar. Um, and another great thing, we've rebuilt this beautiful camp, but we're not increasing the rates at all. So that was Shindi. Moving on from Shindi, we're going to go to Footsteps. And this is our rustic adventure camp. So very different to the five-star properties. Um, it's a real, real nugget of adventure in a five-star itinerary. Many of our guests that come to Footsteps will be doing other five-star properties in their itinerary, and they're wanting something a little bit more adventurous, a little bit more off the beaten track. So from the Footsteps camp, you will access it via the Shindi private airstrip. And your adventure really begins the moment the aircraft wheels touch down on the airstrip. You'll be met by your guide who will host you right the way through your timing camp and then you'll head off to camp. During certain times of year we actually have to do a Makoro crossing to get into camp when the water levels are high so you get to experience that on your first afternoon in the area. So we have our walking safari which is footsteps across the delta and the minimum age is 16. This is really aimed at adults. And then we have Young Explorers, which is our specialist family safari. And with the family safari, you get exclusive use of the camp. So it's only you and your family there. So what this means is we're never mixing a family safari and a walking safari. It's either or. 
out of the one camp. So I'm going to start with the walking safari. And this is camp. So it's got the three tents, um, very much barefoot luxury, get your toes in the sand, um, very, very intimate experience, amazing staff, five-star service, five-star guiding. You are guided by a specialist walking guide. It'll either be Opie or Noah. He's our other specialist guide. And they will take you out on morning and afternoon walks. It's very much tailor-made to the individual guests in camp at that time. There's a lot of flexibility. And what we've also noticed is that there's a different ebb and flow to this type of safari. So maybe on the first afternoon or their first morning in camp, they'd like to go out for a really long walk, experience the area. And then after they've had got the walking out of their system and they've really explored the area, they can also have a go at fishing or macorowing. Um, they can also do night drives and game drives. But as I say, the focus really is on get, getting out on foot. So these are the tents, um, much more basic, more rustic, but still all your creature comforts, proper beds, proper linen, and um, you have a hot water bush shower. The food is amazing and you can go and do a back of house tour where you can meet the chef, um, Memo. Uh, he cooks everything on a campfire, it's incredible. You can go and see where your high tea lemon drizzle cake came from and you'll see that it's in a bush oven cooked on the fire. Then moving on to young explorers. So the minimum age for young explorers is seven. It's also really tailor-made to the different ages and interests in camp. So it's also ideal for teenagers. Um, we've actually, in fact, done a young explorers and the kids were in their early 20s. Um, everybody has an inner child in them and the activities that we do on the family safari are just so much fun. The whole family wants to get involved. And we really do see it as a family safari, it's not just about the children, it's about getting every single family member involved and creating these shared memories and these shared experiences as a family unit. So I have another little video uh, and the video illustrates it way better than I can explain. There's just so much fun to be had on this family safari. <laughs> we've been doing family safaris for decades and we really want to open up the destinations to families. So at the Footsteps Camp we have a family tent that you can see on this slide here. So it consists of two bedrooms and then the shared ensuite bathroom. We actually have a family tent at every single one of our properties and all of these family tents can sleep up to a maximum of five people. So we can have three kiddies in the second bedroom and then you still have the master bedroom. So some of the key points about the Footsteps Camp. So it's one camp with two different safari offerings. We have the walking safari, Footsteps Across the Delta. Then we have the family safari, Young Explorers. From Footsteps, we're now going to move into the Moremi Game Reserve to Akuti. And for those of you that are selling Botswana, you'll know that the Moremi Game Reserve is often on a guest's bucket list. It's really a world renowned wildlife area. And this is why it holds the highest level of protection within Botswana being a game reserve. So Akuti is a slightly smaller camp. We have seven tents and we have two family tents at Akuti. Really unique architecture and style to the camp. Um, 
And in terms of activities, we're able to offer game drives. So you can head out into the Moremi Game Reserve. It's a very diverse environment. So you can head out on, on one morning game drive. You can be going to um, hippo pools or you can go to Dead Tree Island. You can go to grassland areas where you've got good chances of seeing cheetah. So it's very, very diverse. It's very photo photogenic. It's, it's really beautiful. And then we also offer uh, water-based activities. So we're able to go out on the boats, uh, we explore the channels, and we also have the Kakanika Lagoon. So one of my personal favorites, and what I'll always recommend to guests when they're in camp, is that they head out on a boat in the afternoon and they can enjoy a sundowner at the lagoon. Uh, it's really breathtaking to be sat there. The water looks like a mirror, like glass. You've got the sun setting. You've got the birds flying overhead coming into roost for the night. It really, really is a special experience. So this is the dining area. We've also got a pool, lounge area, and then a fire deck at the front of camp. And what's really lovely about the location of the camp itself is it's along the Monachira River. So this is a channel. It's one of the main channels of the Delta. So whether you're in your room or you're at the main area, you have that water element and you have that channel flowing in front of wherever you are. So these are the rooms, really big and spacious. I, I think they might be some of the biggest rooms in the Delta. Um, fantastic views of that channel. In, at night, you could fall asleep hearing the hippos munching the grass outside your room. Uh, and during the day, if you're really lucky, you might see the elephants crossing over the channel. Really great for honeymooners, very romantic. This is a honeymoon suite. We have the outdoor bathtub here. Every room has an indoor and outdoor shower. Um, and with honeymooners, just, just touching on that a little bit more, we really like to make their experience unique. So we'll always offer a private dinner for them. And we have a much more flexible itinerary. So with us, the, we really feel that the guests are deciding what they want to do when they want to do it. So in the case of honeymooners, if they want to have a lazy morning, they can and they can always head out on their activities a little bit later on. You are on holiday after all. So some of the few, uh, a few of the key points about Akuti, it's in the Moremi Game Reserve, which is world renowned, fantastic wildlife experience. If we've got guests that are staying there for three nights or more, we will often encourage them to go and do a full day trip. The area is so vast, you've got so many areas to go and explore um, and see when you're out on a game drive. So from Akuti, we're now going to leave the Okavango Delta and we're going to head down to the central Kalahari, to Danaka. So just to give you an idea of travel time, it'll take you about 50 minutes to get from Shindi down to Danaka and Safari Air do offer direct flights down to the destination. So Danaka is a private conservancy, so it's our own private land that we operate within. We also have our own private airstrip. If you do have any self-drive guests, they are able to access both Tanaka and Akuti by land, by driving. So I'd just like to introduce you to the Central Kalahari. It's very different to the Delta. Um, it's an incredibly uh, rich wildlife area. It's very different. It's it's harsh. It's it's quite intense. So this little video is going to introduce you to the area. Um, enjoy. <laughs>
So we took over Danaka in 2017 and we completely rebuilt all of the rooms and we did a huge facelift to the main area. And then we welcomed our first guests in March 2018. It's really great adding this type of property to our portfolio. And it's a great contrast to the camps that we have up in the Delta. So the camp itself is located around a permanent water hole. Uh, we have wildlife visiting this water hole right the way through the day. So going down to Danaka, you can either do this at the beginning or the end of an itinerary. Um, all of our camps really combine really well together. You can do them in different orders, any order. They're all at the same level. Um, but at Danaka, it's got that amazing wildlife hit to be your first property that you go to. It's also got a slower pace as well, if you would like to choose that. And an example of this is sitting in the main area, watching the wildlife literally come to you in camp. You don't even have to leave the, the deck of your room. So the whole of the camp is looking over this permanent water hole. That's the focal point, um, both the rooms and the main area. And then in terms of the dining experience, we really like to mix it up at Kurandani. So each day we're offering something different for our guests. So you can dine here out under the stars. We also do private dinners, for honeymoon couples or anniversaries, um, any kind of special occasion, just communicate that to us. Our staff on the ground literally love to make a song and dance about any kind of celebration. So help us, help us make um, that happen for your guests. And then these are the rooms. So they are thatched, which helps with the harsh climate of the Kalahari. So during the summer, it can get quite hot. And then in the winter, pretty chilly. This is the family room. So again, we've got the two bedrooms and then the shared ensuite bathroom, indoor and outdoor showers. Uh, and actually, the showers have a view of that water hole as well. Um, but don't worry, it's only the kudus that can see you when you're in the outside shower, nobody else. And in terms of what's on offer out in the Conservancy, we've got really unique structures. So this is the lookout deck. It's at the highest point of the Conservancy and we'll often head out here for sundowners. If you are good at early mornings and you'd like to take your coffee out there, I'm not so good at early mornings, so I definitely recommend a G&T from this lookout deck. You can almost see the curvature of the earth from this vantage point. We also have a sleep out deck. So this is a different structure. Um, you're able to book the sleep out deck if you book three or more nights in camp, there's no extra charge for it. Uh, here it's set up for a couple, but we can also take families at both the Kanana and the Danaka sleep out decks. And how it works is your room is left for you. So if you do need to go back, you can. And um, the guide does stay out there. He's got his own little dome tent a distance away. You're in contact with him with a two-way radio just in case you do need him. Um, it's, it's located about 20, 25 minutes away from camps. So it's really beautiful and remote. And what I like to do when I stay at the sleep out deck is in the mornings actually look over the edge and see what wildlife has walked underneath the deck during the night. We also have the photographic bunker, um, amazing for keen photographers. You're getting that money shot where you're eyeball to eyeball with your subject. The water is just a mere couple of meters in front of you. Uh, we get a lot of game coming down here, so you can get amazing photographs of them. The wildlife can actually smell you. They can't really see you. Sometimes they can hear you if you don't keep your um, voices down. So that means that you get these incredible shots where the wildlife is looking quite alert. And then if you're patient, they relax and they come down to the water. So you can get some really great photographs with the reflection of maybe a lion or a kudu um, from that water. There's also amazing bird life in the area. Uh, there's clouds of quelia during the, during the drier months. And there's jackal that hang out in this spot. And they've got quite a unique hun hunting tactic. Um, instead of trying to pluck the birds out of the sky when they come down to drink, they actually chase the birds into the water and then they swim in the water and they get their little snack. So really, really incredible interaction that you can see from this photographic bunker. And it's very flexible how you use it. So you can use it during your activity time if you like. You can also head back there during siesta time. Um, whenever you'd like to go down there, the guides can take you down. We've actually seen that the wildlife in this area um, congregates around the waterholes. So a lot of our activities are spent at the waterholes, whether you're in this underground photographic bunker, we've also got another hide as well. 
um, and you get some amazing photographs when the wildlife comes down to drink. It's a very harsh, dry area, um, so they're having to drink every day. And you're seeing different species that you don't typically get up in the delta. So like your eland, your oryx, um, your springbok, your brown hyena, even this little guy wanted to get in in the action. In terms of activities, we do the traditional game drives, we can also do night drives. And just something to note on our night drives, we do proper night drives. We actually head out after dinner um, when it's dark so you can go and experience the nocturnal species that are coming out at that time. We also do walking safaris. I really believe that the highlight activity at Danaka is our educational walk with the sand bushmen. It's really, really unique. It's a cultural exchange and it's an incredible culture that you can learn about. This is kind of where we all came from and their survival skills and their knowledge of the bush is just mind blowing. So you can head out, we'll often do it in, a, in the morning, head out on a walk with the guys, you've got Guma or Kumsa or Vota, um, and they explain to you the medicinal uses of the plants, how to make fire with friction, and it's very interactive. So you can taste things, smell things, and um, the guides do speak English, so you've got that direct communication with them, and they're exceptionally proud about their culture and their history, and they absolutely love to share it with the guests. In terms of wildlife, I did mention some of the desert species, but we also have the black mane lion in the area. Um, we have very healthy lion population. Last count, we had about 23 resident lion. So you're seeing them pretty much on a daily basis. So some of the unique selling points about Danaka is the educational walk with the sand bushmen. Um, really great for, for families, um, for everybody. We've often had guests that will head out a couple of times during their time at Danaka. And then we've got the unique um, structures. So we've got the hide, we've got the lookout deck, we've got the underground photographic bunker, we've got the sleep out deck. And we've got permanent water in the area, so there's a lot of wildlife that congregates around there. Um, during the green season, incredible bird life and wildflowers. So that brings me to the end of my presentation today. Um, I'd just like to touch on one last thing, and that is our staff. They really are the heart and soul of all of our properties. I read most of the guest questionnaires that come out of the camps and I'd say at least 75% of them will mention our staff and just how accommodating they are and how much attention to detail is paid and how we make our guests feel at home, um, very relaxed environment when you're in camp. So this last little video uh, has some of the faces that you might see when you visit the Kurunani camps. for watching our webinar today. If you'd like to get in contact, visit our website or follow us on social media. The details are here.